When Gregor Mendel did reciprocal crosses, the genders of the parent did not make a difference to the outcome of the offspring. But in flies, there were some interesting patterns that emerged. A red-eyed female plus a white-eyed male would produce all red-eyed young. That's expected, just like Gregor Mendel's patterns. But when they crossed the F1 males and females, only the sons had wide eyes. So you still got that 3 to 1 ratio, 75% red, 25% wide-eyed. But this was what was weird. All of the females were red-eyed, and 50% of the males were red-eyed, and 50% of the males were white-eyed. Only the males were inheriting white eyes. So that 3 to 1 ratio from Gregor Mendel, I mean, it was still kind of holding true, but there was something else at play here. And we now know that that's because of the sex chromosomes X and Y. So in flies and humans, XX is female and XY is male. It is possible but rare for a monosomy to occur, meaning you have one X in a gamete and the other gamete has no sex chromosome to donate to the offspring. And that's going to make you female if you're human because you're going to lack the sex-determining region of the Y, which is the SRY gene, sex-determining region of the Y. And that protein created by the SRY gene is doing all sorts of things to inhibit the action of another protein, and there's a big chain reaction, and we can talk about it later. But because males only inherit one copy of the X and one copy of the Y, we say that they are hemizygous. They're not heterozygous, they're not homozygous, because they only get one copy, and so we call them hemizygous. So, knowing that, knowing that these traits, the red eye and white eye traits, were on the X chromosome, we can better explain what's going on now with our Punnett squares. And so when you look at that parental generation and the red-eyed female and the white-eyed male and you cross them, you're going to get all red-eyed individuals. Some of them will be heterozygous, only the females can be heterozygous. All the males are hemizygous for the red trait. So they all have red eyes. But you take those F1 individuals and you cross them, so now you have your heterozygous female, your red-eyed male, cross them, there's your output of that Punnett square. You're going to have the, of the males, half of them have white eyes, but of all the chances, you have 25% white eyes. There's your other half of your males, the red-eyed males, your females all having red eyes, but half of them are heterozygous, meaning there's a carrier. They are the carrier, the heterozygous female. We'll talk more about carriers in a bit. If, again, you take your reciprocal cross, like Gregor Mendel would have done, and you take a white-eyed female and a red-eyed male and do the Punnett square, you're going to come up with half of your offspring having red eyes and that half are the females so if you come in with a white-eyed female none of the females will have white eyes because they're getting a red-eyed gene from their father and so they will be heterozygous for the trait they'll be carriers and all the male offspring will have white eyes and this is very common in the sex-linked traits for the mother, if the mother has the phenotype, meaning she is homozygous, often homozygous recessive for that trait, all of her sons get the trait. Male pattern baldness is an X-linked trait. So females that go bald or their hair is thinning in their old age, it's pretty much a guarantee that their sons are headed the same direction. It's genetics. So a quick recap here, you had that reciprocal cross that was also unexpected. All of the males had white eyes, none of the females did. It was a completely new pattern, all because eye color is sex-linked. And so 
That's what we call anytime there's genes on the sex chromosomes, they're sex linked. Normally we're talking about the X chromosomes, so we might call them X linked genes or X linked traits. And so often these are recessive traits. Um, and anytime you're considering recessive traits, um, whether they're sex linked, like male pattern baldness, or eye color in fruit flies, or autosomal, like most of the traits we've been discussing right up till now, traits on chromosomes 1 through 22 in humans, um, you can have heterozygous individuals carry the trait. So any recessive trait can have individuals that are carriers, meaning they don't show the phenotype, but they can pass it on because their recessive gene is masked or hidden by the dominant gene, but they still have that gene. It's still present in them, and they can still pass it on to their offspring. So they are carriers. Only females can be carriers for traits that are X-linked or sex-linked because they're the only gender that gets two copies. They can be homozygous for things on the X. But males and females can be carriers for autosomal traits. And so this will be very important in the next screencast, which we'll save for another day.